If you had a chance to, to venture down to the Byward Market lately, you might have noticed it is a little more colorful than usual. Many of the businesses forced to close have boarded up their windows, but now some of those boards have come to life with vivid paintings and murals. Now, we're hoping to talk to two of the artists today. We have so far only reached one, one of them, but we're trying to get a hold of Robbie LaRiviere, La but Mark Adonato is with us now on the phone. Hi there, Mark. Hey, Alan. How's it going? Okay. Um, you, you were involved in, in the Shadow Lafayette's new mural. Tell me about the, the mural at the Laugh. What, what does it look like? Yeah, uh, so I guess the mural at the last, there's actually two parts to it. They got two windows there that they, they had boarded up. And, uh, what I've done is I painted on both of them, uh, mostly silhouettes of uh, people wearing gas masks dancing around. And then there's another one with a, a kind of, I call him the dystopian uh, deer. And he's, uh, playing the guitar in front of, uh, a parliament. And what makes him dystopian in terms of his appearance? <laughs> Well, I guess he's just, I mean, he's wearing a gas mask. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's the standard look in, in your, <laughs> your mural right now. Now, is this, the, the gas mask, I mean, is this uh, basically when you were thinking about what we're all experiencing right now with COVID-19? Yeah, I mean, it definitely had a little to do with that. But to be honest, I've been actually, like, running around wearing gas masks and biking around the city <laughs> and doing a lot of artwork uh, with hazmat suits and gas masks for a few years now. So. Yeah, I was I was telling somebody, somebody was talking about you the other day. And I'm like, he actually saw this coming. Like he was yeah. ready with for the for the the gas mask look a while back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it. I've been uh, kind of bracing myself for something like this for quite a long time now. And uh, and I mean, not to make light of it too. This I mean, it's obviously a very serious and, and sad time. But uh, but no, it's it's definitely an interesting time as far as me and my artwork goes. Uh, see this all going down so i mean does it change how you paint and what you create when when the because i mean there there has been uh, with your work in general sort of that dichotomy of of i, I don't want to say taking things lightly but that that idea of of dystopia through a slight humor twist is, is that fair if i if i want to say that oh yeah yeah uh, there's a lot of satire and uh, cynicism in my work <laughs> so once once the the real life present is so dire does it shift at all what you were painting or creating yeah you know to be honest uh, in the first couple of weeks i really had to give myself a rethink about my artwork in general and just you know like how do you go on selling this as a if you do want to sell art pieces about this it just seemed uh, a, a lot to think about and morally and ethically about it but uh, but no you know i since then, I've been working on uh, more COVID-related uh, art pieces as well, so stuff about the virus, and uh, so it's kind of, I guess, fueling my art into a bit of a new direction uh, that I definitely didn't anticipate, but um, it's coming out pretty pretty neat, uh, for sure, so... Now, yeah. in, in the case of Shadow Lafayette, Laugh called you up and said, hey, nobody can come in right now, but we want a mural? <laughs> well, actually, this, yeah, so that was kind of interesting, too, how it came about. Uh, about two weeks ago, I was in the market checking out uh, all the boards, all the businesses that were getting boarded up. It was my buddy, Michael Wallach, who sent me a text of a picture of uh, the Heart and Crown. And I said, whoa, i got to go down and check this out more as research for my dystopian artwork, really. And uh, so I went down and photographed a bunch of the buildings, noticed they were all boarded up, and then kind of posted that on Facebook. And some ideas got rolling of like, hey, why don't we, like, you know, get some artists out and do some murals on this? And so, uh, and then I contacted the laugh myself because, uh, I kind of wanted to do something a bit like, you know, laugh being the oldest, uh, pub in all of Ottawa. And, uh, you know, and this is a historic time with the COVID thing. Mm -hmm. So I thought this would be kind of cool to put it two together and do my first mural. Um, so I contacted the laugh and, uh, they were totally on board. They, you know, I volunteered to do it and they offered to pay for the paint mm -hmm. and, uh, away we went. So last week we, we painted it all up and got it done. And then I didn't realize that uh, about two blocks down, Robbie uh, LaRiviere, who is an excellent muralist himself, and he's just all over the city with his mural work. But uh, he was painting away about two blocks for me, too, at the same time. So it's, well, yeah, it's good to know that we're, we're working at it. I'm happy to say that the uh, the excellent muralist Robbie LaRiviere is with us now on the line. We did manage to reach oh, him. Hi, Ro Hi, Robbie. Hey, how you guys doing? Yeah, Mark, the laugh looks great, man. That's awesome. <laughs> Thanks, man. He's doing great work himself there, Robbie's a... Uh, Wow, he does it fast and he covers a lot of ground. It's amazing. This would be really awkward if he was like, "Yeah, I'm not so into Mark's stuff." But <laughs> no, uh, it turns out we're we're good friends, so it's all good. <laughs> Robbie, yeah. tell tell me because you've got this this work up at the old Dubliner building. How did this one come about? Uh, this one was just through the BIA, and they uh, they realized that uh, the hoarding and the wood was looking a little. Um, you know, not so much scary, but, you know, it's, it's start, starting to remind people that, you know, it's not getting any better. So, you know, adding some color and adding some life 
uh, was all we were trying to do, and I think we accomplished that. What did you decide on for a design? I, I, we've already heard from Mark that it worked, so that pressure is out of the way. You did, they apparently did good work. But what did, what did you decide you wanted on in that mural? You know, I was I was involved with a thread that involved a few people from Heart and Crown, and um, I think that's like a, a sister company to the Dubliner. So you know, it was just about the you know the Irish um, pub. You know, like everything they stand for. The you know the food they eat. The you know, the, the drinks are pouring and, and everything that they've been about since, I don't know, you know, one was 1997, one, one was 2004. So just showing homage to the to the company as a whole and, um, you know, just adding color to, to make it less, uh, you know, frightening, I guess. You know, people yeah. were calling it a ghost town at one point and, you know, that's not what we need. We want people to know that, you know, we're coming back strong. We're just trying to get there. Like what? What images did you choose when you say picking from the history? Give me, give me a taste of what what's up there. Yeah, so you know Irish music. So there's lots of instruments that that came with that, and um, uh, you know, you know they're a big fan of the fish and chips, and and you know all the you know the Guinness and and the beers, and you know just just happy stuff. You know the things that you know kids can enjoy, parents can enjoy. So the imagery was just all you know pretty uh, pretty fun fun packed. Yeah, for for people to look at, but the feedback's been amazing. So you know, I think uh, I think Mark had the right idea too by hitting up the last. Because if there is anybody who's bought it up and haven't had anything added to it, they they should probably follow suit. Because you you were also Robbie doing stuff for for Zach's and for the Grand in the market. I, I just asked both of you how how many businesses are approaching you for similar work. Like, what is this is has this been? Uh, and a lot it's kind of, people... of an ongoing thing, yeah. yeah. There's, a, there's another side painter, uh, Pascal Arpain. She's mm-hmm. been killing it, too. She does a great job. So, um, you know, a lot of businesses are just reaching out saying, you know, we still, we still, we're still selling online. We're selling booze now, takeout. We're doing curbside pickup. So all of these factors are now on their windows. So now people are walking by saying, you know what, you know, I've never tried this place. Maybe I should, we, we should order from them tonight. So it's like, right. as long as people are supporting, you know, these windows are helping um, them, them get the food or get the booze or whatever they need to keep the business uh, moving. That is an interesting point that, I mean, people, it, yeah, you, you are not encouraging people to walk in and sit down and have food in, in an establishment anymore. You are just trying to make that place stick in somebody's mind, hoping that they'll order or that they'll keep it in mind for whenever we're through all of, of this. Is, is, it is, is it a bit of a strange assignment, Mark? Oh, yeah. I mean, it's it's definitely different from uh, what I'm used to doing. And, I mean, that's really putting artwork uh, into galleries and museums mm-hmm. and stuff like that. So uh, to try and find a, a new place, too, to, to get people interested in artwork, I think, is also another challenge that I think artists across the city are facing. Um, where is the next art show going to be in the next gallery? Because we're used to doing them on a weekly basis, having yeah. uh, art shows. So, yeah, so that's definitely another challenge. Uh, and I think by doing these boards and the murals, um, you know, it's, it's putting a space outside. So if you are, you know, socially distancing and uh, and trying to, you know, be outside and away from people indoors, uh, you can go enjoy some art downtown and walk around. And so hopefully we'll see more. I've heard the uh, Preston area and the Hintonburg area are also getting places that are uh, – boarding up their windows and uh, reaching out to artists as well. So it sounds like there's going to be a lot more work for artists uh, coming up, uh, depending on how long this goes for. That's true. I mean, you must now be, like, looking around the city going, what about there? Could I paint there? What about that (laughs) space? I want to get into that gallery. It's like, I want to get into that boarded-up wall. I don't know. Do you start looking for spaces now? Yeah, I think the other thing, too, is, uh, I mean, you kind of look at where, I mean, not that I'm a graffiti artist in any way, but you start thinking about, putting art on walls everywhere. And, uh, yeah, you start to see all these blank walls, and I just think that'll be something. Uh, I haven't done a lot of murals, but I definitely like to go in that direction of, of putting more art up on walls, kind of give uh, Ottawa a bit of a Berlin feel or something like that. I know it's ambitious, but, yeah, but yeah, let's we'll see what happens. Listen, thanks to both of you for, for being with us today. I appreciate both of your time and, and your art as well. Thanks for being with us. Yeah, thank you. Bye-bye. In time, thank you. Bye. That's Robbie LaRiviere and Mark Adonato, uh, two Ottawa artists working to beautify downtown core with their murals on boarded up buildings. And we're tweeting a couple of photos of their work. If you know of more murals popping up around town, let me know. CBC All in a Day on Twitter, or you can email us to allinaday at cbc.ca.